Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes is now official for WWE Backlash in Puerto Rico. Speaking of matches that are official for Backlash, a big six-man tag team match involving the Bloodline, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Matt Riddle has been made official for the big premium live event. Plus, the Judgment Day and the Bloodline join forces to take out their respective enemies this week on Monday Night Raw. Trish Stratus explains why she attacked Becky Lynch and reveals she was the one behind the attack on Lita backstage. Bad Bunny is going to be on next week's episode of Monday Night Raw. The Hurt Business want to get back together. The Miz demands respect after his excellent match against Seth Freakin' Rollins on Raw this week. Dana Brooke, she's had another sign confiscated from fans in attendance at Raw this week. Plus, an update on why specifically WWE chose the specific date for this year's draft. The ratings for this past week's episode of SmackDown are in. Could and should Logan Paul win the men's money in the bank briefcase? WWE is going to be returning to Mexico this summer. Plus, SummerSlam breaks records for a stadium show. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. Let's start off talking about Backlash, talking about Brock Lesnar, talking about the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Their confrontation was on Raw last night, and it's led, as many people expected, to a match at the big upcoming premium live event. It's official. It's going to be Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. On last night's Raw, Cody Rhodes' opponent for Backlash was confirmed as both Rhodes and his current foe Brock Lesnar in the same place at the same time for the first time since the Raw after WrestleMania 39. While Cody came out to the ring first, he was dressed to fight as he called out Lesnar, but was instead met by WWE official Adam Pearce. Pearce, functioning, functioning in a full inept authority figure capacity, told Cody he wasn't medically cleared to be there, but then upon hearing the music of Brock Lesnar, Pearce quickly explained the pair needed to save the fight for Peacock for Backlash because that's where the match is going. Going to happen. Informing both that their match had been made official for Backlash, the match was also confirmed via a graphic on the show after the segment as well. Lesnar, for his part, didn't really do all that much. Came out in a big <laughs> black jacket looking like, I guess, a cowboy version of The Undertaker. Well, actually looking like The Undertaker. The Undertaker wore a hat. But he looked like a Brock Lesnar version of The Undertaker. He was wordless in the segment that eventually devolved in Rhodes attacking helpless security in an effort to prevent him from getting to Brock. They also showed him leaving the arena and that was about it. So we didn't really hear any reasoning for why Brock Lesnar attacked Cody Rhodes a couple of weeks ago. That's still a mystery, of course. We have heard on WWE television over the last few weeks on SmackDown and Raw respectively that Brock Lesnar may have been frustrated with his, with his positioning on the WrestleMania 39 card. But as of right now, we still don't know the reasoning as to why Brock Lesnar decided to attack the American Nightmare. One thing we do know that is official though is that it is indeed going to be Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar in the main event of the Backlash Premium Live event. Another match made official for Backlash is this six-man tag team match that I think most people expect it to happen. For months, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens have been embroiled in a feud with the Bloodline. And at WrestleMania 39, the Canadian best friends were not only in the main event of Night 1, but also defeated the Usos to become the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions. Prior to that, though, the Bloodline's enforcer Solo Sokoa took Matt Riddle out of action for months following a brutal attack on the December 5th episode of Raw. Yet while the original bro may have come up short against Sokoa this past Friday following his return to WWE TV, the saga is not over. That's because Monday night on Raw, actually prior to Raw actually going on the air, WWE announced that Riddle alongside Zayn and Owens will be teaming up to take on Sokoa and the Usos at Backlash on May 6th. This is the tweet that they said, quote, breaking uh, WWE's The Usos, Solo Sokoa of the Bloodline will take on Matt Riddle and undisputed tag team champions Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn at Backlash. Now, the two questions arguably remain, however. One, given their back and forth over the past few weeks alone, will all six of these men even make it to Backlash? And two, will Zayn and Owens still be the champions when that day comes? It was announced last Friday by Paul Heyman that the April 28 episode of SmackDown, just over one week prior to the premium live event, Zayn and Kea will be putting their newly won tag team titles on the line in a rematch with the Usos. In the meantime, Solo Sokoa continues to run roughshod over the main roster at the expense 
of Zayn, Owens, and Riddle most recently. He's only suffered one pinfall loss since his main roster call-up last September, courtesy of Cody Rhodes on the final Monday Night Raw before WrestleMania. Since then, Solo has helped Jey Uso defeat Zayn while picking up victories over both Owens and Riddle. Now, speaking of the bloodline, they actually made, I guess, a deal with the devil because two heel factions united last night on Monday Night Raw. Raw kicked off with Paul Heyman and the bloodline and an announcement of a very explosive short-term alliance that actually maybe showed more cracks in the bloodline once again. With the Usos, Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman kicking off last, right, last night's Raw, there was a big announcement. Quote, if there's a heaven, none of us are getting into it, Heyman said, before sharing the plan that he said was conceived by none other than undisputed WWE Universal Champion himself, Roman Reigns. In a short-term alliance with the Judgment Day, the two squads of villains would work together to eliminate each other's foes. With last night's edition of Raw headlined by a, six, uh, by a big six-man tag team match pitting the Judgment Day against Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens and Riddle, there would be a general exchange. The first match of the night featured an incensed Solo Sokoa taking out his frustrations on Rey Mysterio and defeating the 2023 Hall of Famer. But certainly it was very interesting and also interesting that Jay Uso said, hey, we didn't know about this. And Paul Heyman said, well, the tribal chief wanted you to be on your toes. So nobody knew apart from me. And Solo as well, because Solo doesn't really have loud conversations. So the Uso is getting more and more on the fringes of the bloodline, maybe, which is certainly very interesting. And last night's edition of Raw also featured Trish Stratus explaining why she attacked Becky Lynch and also taking credit for attacking Lita too. Back in February, WWE Hall of Famer Trish Stratus returned to the fray to help Lita as well as Becky Lynch defeat Dakota Kai and Io Sky for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. But not even two months later and only one week after teaming with Lita and Lynch to defeat Damage Control at WrestleMania 39, Stratus turned on the man on the April 10 episode of Raw after losing the women's tag team titles to live Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. Of course, she only participated in the match to begin with because Lita had been attacked earlier on in the evening. So Monday night on Raw, Stratus came clean, admitting that she was the one responsible for taking out her fellow Hall of Famer. So what made the former seven-time WWE Women's Champion do it? A lack of gratitude for Lynch, apparently, as well as a lack of recognition from the WWE Universe. Stratus took credit for the relevance of the current women's division and brushed aside her supposed best friend in the process. I took out Lita, yeah, Stratus said to the crowd in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, and the reason I needed Lita, Lita out the picture is because I needed it to be crystal clear that the person who screwed Becky Lynch out of her titles was me. Stratus didn't stop there, though, knowing full well that Lynch wasn't even going to be in the building Monday night. Of course, Becky Lynch had tweeted out she wasn't going to be at Raw. Quote, Becky, I am not your friend. There will be no next time. And I made uh, a point that very moment that I was going to make everything right. And I took out the man just like that, Stratus continued, before declaring herself the greatest of all time and the single most important figure in the history of WWE. Of course, there have been rumors that Stratus and Lynch could face off at SummerSlam this year. Can they stretch it out that far though? That's the big question at the moment. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And could we actually maybe see Stratus and Lita face off one more time inside of a WWE ring as part of this ongoing storyline? Bad Bunny will be on Monday Night Raw next week. Of course, he's going to be hosting Backlash in Puerto Rico and possibly, it looks like, I guess, he's going to be wrestling as well. At WrestleMania 39, Dominic Mysterio was moments away from striking his father and newly minted Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio with a chain in an attempt to steal a victory at the Showcase of the Immortals. Dominic may have gotten away with it too, if not for Bad Bunny grabbing the chain from Dom's hand and ultimately helping Rey pick up the victory. Two nights later, during the Raw after WrestleMania, he got involved again. Again, but this time Damien Priest was there to put an end to things, which led to Priest slamming his friend through the announcer's table. Now with Backlash on the horizon and Bad Bunny set to host a premium live event when it comes to San Juan, Puerto Rico on May 6th, he'll be making another Raw appearance along the way. Quote, breaking host of Backlash, Bad Bunny will be on Monday Night Raw next Monday live from Chicago, the official WWE handle tweeted. Bad Bunny has only had two WWE matches to his name, but interestingly, his very first came alongside Damian Priest at WrestleMania 37 when the duo teamed up to take on and defeat The Miz and John Morrison. The following year, the recording artist returned during the men's Royal Rumble match. That didn't end up going quite as well, with Bad Bunny taking an F5 from the eventual winner, Brock Lesnar. Priest made another reference to his friend later on Monday night, but if Bad Bunny continues to get involved, the Judgment Day likely isn't going to waste any time in attempting to 
dispatch him. Fortunately, Bunny appears to have Rey Mysterio in his own corner as well as the LWO. So we could be looking at a situation maybe where we see a tag team match, a six-person tag team match or something like that announce a backlash next week. Now, there have been so many rumors and rumblings about the Hurt Business getting back together, plans being in place, and plans being canceled. Well, it appears that pretty much every single former member of the faction wants to get the stable back together on WWE TV. At this point, it's no secret that WWE fans and the group's own former members have been calling for a reunion of the Hurt Business. WWE was even clearly heading in that direction on TV a couple of months ago, but there's been no movement towards them getting back together for at least a few weeks now. The former members of the group also appear to be getting more vocal than ever on social media about wanting it to happen. Responding to a fan tweeted they missed the Hurt Business yesterday, MVP tweeted, quote, We all do, and Cedric Alexander tweeted, Me too. Shelton Benjamin joined in too, although he didn't respond to that particular tweet, but rather the end of last night's April 17 episode of Raw. The finish to last night's show saw a show-long angle culminate with the factions combining and warring in a huge brawl, the Judgment Day and the Bloodline siding together against the Latino World Order, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle. The show went off the air with chaos of a fight in and outside of the ring. And after it finished, Shelton Benjamin tweeted, quote, I wonder who could bring some order to all this mayhem. That comment, of course, has been taken by fans to suggest that Benjamin wants the Hurt Business to get in on the action. Bobby Lashley was the only ex-Hurt Business member featured on the show last night, and he had a match against Austin Theory that ended in a non-finish after Bronson Reed interfered and attacked both of them, but focused more on Lashley, of course, continuing that feud that was maybe started last week on Raw when Lashley and Reed had that match that went to a double countout. So would you like to see the Hurt Business back in WWE? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. The Miz last night on Raw had a fantastic match, an excellent match against Seth freaking Rollins. After a hard-hitting and enjoyable match on Raw between The Miz and Rollins, social media erupted with fans touting the match. With The Miz popping by the app to share a picture of himself along with the caption, quote, Monday Night Miz, put some respect on my name. The Miz took on Seth Rollins in the battle, and obviously it was an excellent match, but... Where are both stars going in terms of storylines at the moment? No one really knows. And with a big premium live event around the corner, as of right now, it doesn't look like either's really going to be on the show. This is a really strange and fascinating thing that keeps occurring. I don't think if anyone said, if you had uh, Dana Brooks going to have multiple signs confiscated from multiple shows from fans on your bingo card, I'd ask you if you were a time traveler. So... A fan on Twitter posted a picture of what obviously implied to be themselves holding up a sign on Raw last night that said, I paid to see Dana Brooke. Unfortunately, the caption of the tweet was as follows. Just got featured on Raw with my Dana Brooke sign. Ten minutes later, security came and told me I had to take it down. This can't keep happening. I heard this happen to another fan a few weeks ago. WWE fix this. Hashtag give Dana Brooke a chance. So by the sounds of it, the physical sign may have not been confiscated, but at least the privilege of holding it up was. Brooks saw the tweet and replied, quote, I'm so sorry this happened. I love the support and getting the message across. As noted, if the fan story is indeed true, it's not the first time this has happened recently to one of Dana Brooks fans. Two weeks ago on the April 3rd edition of Raw, a fan held up a similar sign that said, give Dana Brooke a chance. The fan said a member of the production team told him he wasn't allowed to show it on TV anymore and took it away. At the time, Brooke replied, quote, I am so sorry, this is so wrong and will be addressed. Brooke hasn't been on Raw since way back in November, but does wrestle pretty regularly during the main event tapings before Raw starts. So I guess if they paid to see Dana Brooke, they might have last night. I don't think she was in the main event tapings, though. The you know, she hasn't even done that since the end of March. So her last match was a victory over NXT's Electra Lopez on the March 27 uh, episode of Main Events. That was taped for that week's episode. So is this going to become a thing? Is this going to become a thing that continually happens? Dana Brooke signs being confiscated or <laughs> censored on Raw? We'll have to wait and see. Now, the draft is upcoming and uh, specific dates for the draft have now been revealed and we may, now may know why that is indeed the case. On the April 7th edition of SmackDown, Triple H announced the return of the WWE draft, confirming that every star in the company will be eligible to be picked. It was later revealed that the draft will begin on the April 28th episode of SmackDown and then continue on the May 1st episode of Monday Night Raw. This is not the only notable draft that will be taking place in late April, with the NFL draft taking place on, uh, from April 20th 
27 to April 29. Per Sean Ross app of Fightful Select, WWE sources have indicated that scheduling the WWE draft around the NFL draft was, quote, not an accident. With Triple H specifically noting that all stars will be eligible for the draft, it has been heavily speculated that several NXT names will be selected during the shakeup. Many are predicting the likes of former NXT champion Bron Breaker and former North American champion Cameron Grimes will move to Raw or SmackDown before the end of the draft. So if you're wondering why those dates specifically, it's because the NFL draft is around that period of time as well. We got the ratings for last Friday's episode of SmackDown. Per Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, SmackDown drew 2.265 million viewers. This is down from the April 7 edition that drew 2.468 million viewers. In the 18 to 49 demographic, Friday's episode scored a 0.58 rating. This is also down from the week prior that scored a 0.69 rating. WW ranked number three in the demo for the night overall, only trailing behind the NBA games on TNT and ESPN. The show featured Solo Sokoa defeating Matt Riddle in the main event and the announcement of the WWE draft on the April 28th episode. Also, Paul Heyman announced that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will defend the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships against the Usos in a WrestleMania 39 rematch in two weeks on SmackDown. Now, some other interesting news and tidbits here. Logan Paul, should Logan Paul win the men's Money in the Bank ladder match and therefore hold the Money in the Bank contract? I really want to know your thoughts in the comments about this one because this one's quite fascinating. So Sam Roberts, of course, radio personality, commentator, WWE, I guess, affiliate, has argued why Logan Paul is the best option to win the men's Money in the Bank briefcase this year, stating that the YouTube personality could hold WWE hostage by winning the briefcase. Quote, this is a man who, while holding the briefcase, would have uh, the WWE held hostage because the idea of him being WWE champion is so um, bad to what w the WWE universe wants, Robert stated on TikTok. In 2023, the person who should hold the Money in the Bank briefcase is Logan Paul. With Paul, specifically, it might just be the most logical step, and he's already got a crack at ending Roman Reigns' title run and ultimately fell short, but every moment he's been involved has been must-see television. Whether you love or loathe him, he brings eyeballs to the product, and Roberts believes he needs to be used in a big way whenever WWE calls on him. Quote, Logan Paul is in this position now where he's had big matches. He's proven what he can do, Roberts continued. Logan Paul has to operate at a top level in order to be worth the investment that's being made in Logan Paul. So how do you operate up there? You have him go to this pay-per-view and win the Money in the Bank briefcase. Paul, who recently signed a new contract with WWE, has only five matches to his name, two of them coming at WrestleMania 38 and 39, a win alongside The Miz against Rey and Dominic Mysterio in 2022, followed by a loft to Seth, to Seth Freakin' Rollins <laughs> earlier this month. It's been between those moments came a singles victory over The Miz at SummerSlam, a loss in the main event of Crown Jewel against Roman Reigns, and an appearance in the 2023 Men's Royal Rumble match. So could you see possibly Logan Paul winning the Men's Money in the Bank briefcase? Let me know your thoughts on that one. WWE is set to return to Mexico. According to an announcement from WWE, the company will be returning to Monterrey and Mexico City in July. The news release says that WWE will run Arena CDMX in Mexico City on July 22nd and the Arena Monterey in Monterey on July 23rd. The list of stars being advertised for the shows includes Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio, as well as Cody Rhodes, Becky Lynch, Raquel Rodriguez, undisputed tag team champions uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, Raw Women's champion Bianca Belair, and others. Notably absent from the announcement is undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns. The tickets go on sale uh, on April 21st. Rey Mysterio is fresh off a victory over his son Dominic at WrestleMania 39, following his Hall of Fame induction by legendary Mexican luchador Cody. Conan, Mysterio recently reformed the old WCW faction, the Latino World Order, to help even the odds against Dominic and the rest of the Judgment Day, bringing Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, Joaquin Wilde, Cruz del Toro, and Zelina Vega into the fold. The warring Mysterio factions also recently got Bad Bunny involved into their rivalry as the Judgment Day attacked the Grammy Award-winning singer on Raw recently. Of course, as I mentioned earlier on, Bad Bunny is going to be back next week. Finally, SummerSlam, whoa, the tickets are red hot for the show in Detroit. Tickets for this year's WWE SummerSlam went on sale this past Friday, and the numbers aren't just looking promising, they're looking historic. On Twitter, Sports Business Journal reported that WWE has already sold more than 32,000 tickets for the event. That figure breaks the company's record for day one sales on any non-WrestleMania stadium show. Detroit's Ford Field was announced as the home of this year's SummerSlam in February, alongside a new logo for the event 
to go with the location, with the press release for the announcement noting Detroit's special place in WWE history. WWE previously held WrestleMania 23 at Ford Field in 2007, but more significantly, Detroit was the home to WrestleMania 3, although that place took um, that show took place at the larger Pontiac Silverdome. WWE's rapid ticket sales for their premier summertime event is no surprise, as tickets for 2021 SummerSlam sold at a similarly speedy pace. The pace of their current sales measure well against and uh, against perceivable advantage uh, advantages the sale of the 2021 tickets had such as their uh, first full capacity stadium show in over a year and the then rumored blockbuster main event of john cena versus roman reigns as of right now no significant matches or plans are currently known for this year's SummerSlam. there are reports of a match between becky lynch and trish stratus planned for the show wwe ceo nick khan noted in the lead up to wrestlemania 39 that the company had wrestlemania plans in place uh, months in advance as well as plans for the months after further suggesting that the SummerSlam card is already well under construction. So what do you think the main event of SummerSlam this year could be? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But there you go, guys. It's the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Bottom right hand corner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.